This week's message, given by Linda Diffley at the Succasana United Methodist Church, July 28, 2019. The message is, Missions of Succasana United Methodist Church, based on Micah 6, 6-8, Ephesians 4, 1-6, and 11-13. Today's Old Testament reading is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 6-8. through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And today's New Testament is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, and verses 11 through 13. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We've got a few great speakers today that are going to give a testimony, and I'm, I'm going to start with um, probably one of my partners. He's become one of my partners in crime. Um, anytime I need something with missions, he's there. Um, but he also represents not just him, but he and his wife, to me, are the face of Roxbury Social Services, which does so much for this community. And we, I don't want to steal some thunder, but there's a lot of things we do at this church throughout the year to support Roxbury Social Services. Um, so without further ado, um, I would like Dick Proust to come up. Good morning. It's on autopilot right now, so this is how I adjust the volume. Uh, Linda wanted me to speak a little bit about Roxbury Social Services. I think most of you know that it exists, that it's over in uh, Horseshoe Lake building there. And, uh, but some people don't know all the things that they do, and then I'll tell you what we do. This is how they support their clients. The food pantry, well, yes. Clothing distribution, dishes, pots, and pans, and utensils. All this is free. Small appliances. Provide baby food, formula, clothing, diapers, cribs, packs, and players. And I'll add dog and cat food. There's a lot donated by the St. Hubert's and a local pet store. Uh, school backpacks, new shoe program, emergency temporary housing. Survival backpacks for homeless. Annual holiday toy distribution for clients of Roxbury's needy children. Special family wish trees. Three holiday food basket programs, spring, Thanksgiving, and winter. Roxbury camp assistance and free furniture and large appliances they have listed on a bulletin board. Um, we know what we contribute. We contribute through the Food donations in the newsletter um, that just went out this week. There's a please note. The food pantry is completely out of the following. Antiperspirant, shave cream, toothpaste, tissues, toilet paper, and anything you can provide is appreciated. Toilet paper and paper towels. Two of the biggest things that they are always out of because you can't buy them with food stamps. And a lot of people don't think of donating it. Um, 
Some numbers that I got from Irene, these are like for the last few months. On a monthly basis, they serve 250 adults, 175 children, bags of food over 400 in one month. And I mentioned dog and cat food. Uh, people go once every two weeks on their day. How do we help? Well, we give the food, those three holiday meals. We collect meals, put them together, and bring them to social services where they distribute them. Church down the street, St. Therese, they take 60 or so families and they collect and distribute it there. Um, what else? Hmm? Oh yeah, that was the big one. There, there's people who can't go shopping for food and things like that or they don't know what to get. Janet always needs money to pay for motels and she loves to have gift cards, ShopRite gift cards, gas cards if you want to get them but Bruce likes to sell gift cards. $10 increments is what she really needs because she can give those out to a, a client. She can't give them a $50 gift card. Uh, there's another thing in Roxbury. It's called Friends of Roxbury Social Services. It's a 501C that's been set up that people can make cash donations to, write a check to, and give it to her, and it'll get deposited in that account. The town has set it up so that social services will draw the money out but you can't give cash to Janet. You have to give it to Friends of Roxbury Social Services. And it's a tremendous mission for us to support because it's all in town and it's a good donation. Okay? Back to control. So probably the oldest mission in this church is right below us. It's the, it's the thrift shop. And the thrift shop was started many years ago um, and was worked for many years by some of my favorite church moms, um, Gary's mom being one of them, um, that, kept, that not only kept the community um, clothed, but they would find other opportunities when there was fires or other dis family disasters that they would support. So we've seen um, a lot of turnover in the thrift shop in regards to who's working it, and thank God it's still thriving and doing well and actually probably financially doing better than we could have ever imagined. And one of the new regulars I've asked to come up and speak this morning, I've asked Joyce, to come, I'm going to adjust the microphone down, Joyce. You're welcome. She's introduced me so you all know who I am. Um, I was asked to talk about this uh, volunteering. A little closer. Okay. Wait a second. Volunteering in the various church missions, and in particular, our thrift shop. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Superstorm Sandy. I journeyed down the shore and helped to assist those impacted by the disaster. Our group did day of service and upon leaving knew that our small contribution was helping those who had lost everything. On another occasion, I went to Cumac in Patterson and helped organize things down there. Our church volunteers go there several times during the year. But most recently, and within a year after my retirement, I was searching for a meaningful way to fill some of my idle days. After many trips to donate item, items to social services and our thrift shop, I knew that I would like volunteering the, here. I approached the ladies of the gift sh uh, thrift shop and Pastor Stephen and was accepted to the crew. All the ladies working in the shop spend many long hours and have great dedication to making this particular church function one of the most beneficial missions of their church. The shop, um, the shop services those in our community and beyond who are in need of this type of outlet. I thoroughly look forward to arriving at the shop on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings and working with the others. So in closing, 
A shout out to those committed volunteers, Pauline, Stacy, Bonnie, Tina, and Elena, and to the men, Ron and Bob, who are there when we call. Please keep, keep your slight, slightly used or unwanted new items coming. The church and I thank you. So, um, Christian Outreach Project has been um, instrumental in this church since its inception um, when it started in 1983. Um, this church has been very involved and it has been very instrumental in the growth of Christian Outreach. And it was um, 18 years ago on a COP Sunday when I was pulled in um, emotionally and spiritually after a testimony by Dave Brown, Fern's son, in regards to his work at COP. And um, it used to be we could only financially afford to send a few kids. And the good news is now today, thanks to everybody's generosity with our fundraisers, we can send as many kids that want to attend. It's for youth that have finished ninth through 12th grade. Um, and this year we were blessed um, with um, nine amazing youth, and I would like to ask one of those amazing youth, Melissa, to come back up and share her testimony. And this was her third year at COP. So, Melissa. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know what COP is, Basically, a bunch of the youth and a bunch of the adults go over to Camp Henry Lou Hoover for one week and stay in the camp there while we go to help at people's houses for home repairs or just entire renovations of areas of their home to help them live happier and safer lives. And as she said, this was my third year. And I think it was definitely my favorite year, my most active project yet. We had to build a patio and build a deck with safe stairs because the stairs that they had then before the project were just cinder blocks with boards of wood that were very unstable and the homeowners were lovely but the man walked with a cane and his wife had knee problems so obviously we need to renovate the stairs that aren't going to be accommodating to that and I had lovely conversations with the homeowners every year this year, I learned a lot about their hunting hobby and a lot about their just different stories that they had throughout the years, and it was wonderful. They were wonderful people, and that's why COP makes me so happy, because you get to learn about these new people and then help them, not only with their home re repairs, but like to bring the Holy Spirit into their lives, because all throughout the week, you learn about different messages of God, and you learn different things about the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and God the Father Almighty. So I think that's definitely my favorite part of COP, that and making new friends and learning more about yourself within God's plan, being his hands and feet. So that's definitely why I enjoy going here every year. And I just want to thank all of you in the congregation who helped support us along our faith journey and our mission journey this year and every year, and I hope you'll continue to in the future because you can see it makes an impact on the volunteers and it makes an impact on the homeowners every year. So thank you all for that. And yeah, I hope it is fun next year too. <laughs> Our next speaker is another one of these ladies that will jump in and help anywhere we need her. Um, and this year, we had, we had a lot of people say, I want to go to Habitat for Humanity. And it ended up, just due to timing of everything, we only ended up with one lone participant. But I couldn't think of anybody better to send to represent what um, missions embodies and, and making a difference. Um, so I'd like to ask Karen to come up. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my experience at Habitat Day was very interesting. I went with the Presbyterian Church. There was probably about, I'd say, six or seven of us. 
and they broke us into job categories and one of them was digging pole host and I said no I'm not doing that <laughs> so I got into the actual I thought I was going to be like planting flowers or painting inside and we got there and it was a shell there was nothing there yet you know so we got our crew leader and he um, took us over there and and he gave us instructions and he says okay here's the wood here's this okay cut this by you know quarter inch five feet I'm like <laughs> and and I said to the after he left I looked at the other I was like do you know what he's talking about and they're all like well I don't know so we kind of plowed ahead and it was quite an experience because I used a chop saw which I would never have touched anything like that prior to this and they showed us how to use it and uh, a nail gun and I'm up on this ladder putting a nail in the thing so but um, I think probably the nicest part of the experience is the homeowners or the future homeowners are working with you so you actually get to see the people who are going to benefit from this and I don't know if you know much about Habitat but their motto is a hand up not a hand out so this is sweat equity so the, the future homeowners are responsible for providing I think 300 hours of labor on these homes so this one is right up here on Main Street it's going to be 12 individual I guess townhouses or complexes and it's beautiful it's done so nicely and all these volunteers come every weekend or during the week or whatever so it's a great opportunity to get together and I met a lot of really nice people from Presbyterian Church so I would highly recommend it if we do it again and and I'll be up there trying it again I guess with the top saw I didn't cut my hand off so that was a good thing <laughs> I, what I want to know, Karen, is all these projects Bob takes on, do you assist him now with the power tools? No? All right. Okay. Um, our next speaker is um, the Energizer Bunny of Missions, um, my buddy Janet, um, one of my partners in crime, and she truly touches everything we do in missions in this church. Uh, but what I give her incredible credit for is she will do a week of COP, which is emotionally, personally, and physically draining, come back for a week, and then head off to Kentucky to Redbird, where normally it's more humid and it's hotter. Although this year with the summer here, I'm not sure. It was probably a toss-up. But um, I, her dedication to Redbird every year, even going solo this past year, is amazing. So, um, Energizer Bunny, would you come up? Hello, good morning. Um, this was my 10th year going to Redbird, and it's very similar to COP. It's run the same way. You know, we get up, we have devotions and breakfast at 7 o'clock, and we work during the day. We're usually back about 4, 4.30, depending on where you are and how far you have to travel. And then we also have worship at night. So it's a long day. We, we have to be at breakfast at 7, and lights out are at 11. So you really hope that you're in a cabin with people that are going to adhere to that rule because you need your sleep. Uh, I traveled with the Butler Church. This year there were 36 of us that went. We traveled in vans. There were three vans and one cargo van. And we meet up with other churches along the way. We stay in Abington, Virginia. On, we leave Saturday morning from Butler Church. We stay in Abington, Virginia. Uh, at that church, at Pleasant View Methodist Church. We sleep on the floor, we just bring our sleeping bag, and then they serve us a great fellowship after we, um, have, after we attend service. And then we head down to Kentucky, we get there about one o'clock in the afternoon, get our job sites assigned to us, and um, you know, plan for the rest of the week. Uh, this year, I was a little disappointed that I didn't have a job out in the, mountain area, I was assigned to the school, which is right on the base. It was a five-minute drive or a ten-minute walk. 
Um, but the good thing was it was air conditioned. Because <laughs> it, it, there were jobs where, you know, you're out on a roof and it is, we were probably having the same temperatures that we were having here. So those that are outside doing any kind of, you know, ramps, painting, roofs, it's very, very hot. Uh, always taking breaks, we make the, you know, when I'm out there, you make the kids come down every, you know, 20, 30 minutes to make sure they drink, drink enough. But so I was painting along with 20 other people in, it's an international Christian school. They have uh, a handful of people that come from Africa and they spend their four years of high school. It's a K to 12 school. So there was a lot of painting to be done and um, we really made a difference. And again, like Melissa said, you're working with other people from other churches, so you get to know them. And um, I love to do it because I just love being the hands and feet of Jesus. And I thank everybody for all the donations during the course of the year, and um, hope I can still be the Energizer Bunny as I get older and older. <laughs> About three weeks ago, the Sunday after COP, Pastor Stephen gave this sermon. And I, he didn't know at the time, but it spoke so loudly to me when he was giving it. Because it, the, basically the message was what happens when people get weary of doing missions? And how do you keep motivated? And what do you do to keep going? And why do you do it? Um, and I told him afterwards, I said, you either read, were reading my mind or God took my thoughts and transferred them to you, which he swore that's really what happened. Um, and one of the things that I think and why our scripture today is so important, missions comes down to missions is not necessarily just going out and physically doing things. It is the fact that that as Christians, we need to do justice with all that we mean. And justice does not mean justifying doing something. It means looking at a situation and knowing that a lot of times people need help for situations well beyond their control. You love kindness, meaning you love those who may not feel or may not know any source of love in their lives. That can be done outside of here on a walking through the mall basis or walking through ShopRite. But most importantly, you're doing it humbly. You're doing it knowing that you don't expect anything in return and that you're doing it just as Jesus did it. My energizer to get back into doing missions for the year is New York City Relief. Because when you go in the city, and we go to a, a nine different sites, you are seeing the face of those from, from all different walks and all different extremes of life. We see that in COP, we see it in Redbird, but it slaps me in the face when I do New York City Relief. It is the face of addiction walking on the street. It is the face of chronic illness and people that have unfortunately started with painkillers and couldn't afford to keep their painkillers and have migrated to cheap street drugs. It is the face of people trying to keep their families together and having to make the choices between, do I buy groceries this week or do I pay a utility bill? Or do I pay the utility bill or do I go buy my medicine? It is people who many times don't know what it's like to love and to be loved. And what you're doing in that short snippet of time is accepting everyone as is, no judgment allowed. And it's a reminder that everybody needs to feel God's love. Everybody needs to know there is help. Everybody needs to know that no matter what they're facing, they're not alone. Um, years ago, 
probably the person that first really inspired me beyond Dave Brown um, to get involved in missions was Reverend Mary Lou Ballantyne. And I remember one of her sermons, she basically said, okay, assuming everybody sleeps eight hours a day, you got 16 hours left in the day, you got seven days a week, 112 hours a week, you're in church two hours. I like you in church, I love seeing you, but what matters is what you're doing those other 110 hours when you leave this place and you want to show people without advertising, you are a Christian. And what that means is following the very basic scripture of Micah to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. There are so many opportunities that all of us have. I would love for you to join me in New York City Relief, but you don't need to. You can do it in this community. You can do it um, outside this community. I think about my homeowners uh, that I had this year at COP. The homeowner was a 92-year-old woman who thought life had forgotten her. Um, even though she has five generations of family, she thought life had given up on her. Um, her home was in need of a lot of repairs, and so many repairs that her homeowner's insurance was taken away from her until she could get the repairs done. Some of the, the repairs were simple. Stephen, who was on the video, was on my crew. Some of them were simple. But there was a few tough ones. And this is, this is the kind of thing that when you get into the tough ones, you pray that God will send you the strength and the power and the resources to do it. Before I talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about my homeowner. So my homeowner had three children. Uh, my homeowner grew up in a very abusive relationship with a father that physically and sexually beat her most of her life. She left home early, was married, had three children, found out later her father also abused the children uh, when given the opportunity. Her son went off to Vietnam and never came home. Her youngest daughter ended up developing uh, severe illnesses that impacted her brain and her mental stability. Her one daughter that is healthy, she is probably one of the strongest women I've ever seen who works side by side with us, similar to what Karen was describing about habitat. Her daughter and her granddaughter were working to figure out how to keep the roof over her head. Her daughter lost her husband to suicide. After two bouts in Vietnam, he came home, couldn't get a job, and thought the world ended and committed suicide. Her son um, and daughter, her daughter, thank God, is thriving, but her son died, it was two years ago, the day we started COP, of addiction issues. It is a family that has doubted whether Christ is there. And the thing that was even though we did all this great work for them, the thing that, that probably meant the most to them was us showing up every day, coming back to work, and reminding them that God loves them. We're here because God sent us. Um, it was an amazing, amazing family, an amazing story. So I had a lot of work that I had to get done, but one of the most challenging things was there were these two humongous tree branches. There was actually three branches tree branches that came down. I was able to get one of them down. Um, the homeowner called me a squirrel after I did it because of the way I climbed the ladder and cut, but there was two branches I just couldn't get. And to my rescue came the Brown family. Vern came with them. He didn't climb the tree, but he was there spiritually <laughs> and emotionally. Dave Brown and his three amazing sons and took the tree, the tree branches down. We got them hauled off into the woods. But the other thing that they did for this homeowner that I hadn't even had on my radar that Dave picked up on, um, she had a flagpole that she loved, and it had the US flag on it, but it also had the Vietnam flag. And years ago in Superstorm Sandy, it came down. She was told it couldn't be repaired. Guess who repaired it? Dave Brown and his children. 
the flag went up, the flagpole went up, the flag went up, and the homeowner who rarely came out, comes out of the house, asked me to help her out of the house so she could sit in the yard and look at her flagpole. So something as simple and as little that we might take for granted is having your flagpole back up on your home made the world of difference. Um, so I, I, I constantly am humbled by what other people do in missions and how they know how to do the right thing and how God speaks to them. So I just ask you today in closing, um, please never assume when you leave here you're done with church for the week. Um, I ask you to find those opportunities to follow the scripture, to do justice in any way possible. Always love kindness and do it walking humbly with God. Amen.